How you doing everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry. And today in this beautiful Southern California day, we we're able to get the HQ21 outside. So be ready to go through a complete and full walkthrough of the HQ21. So where we're gonna start with the HQ21 is right here at the very beginning, the front, the part that everybody sees. And as you look at the design, obviously we still have that nice aerodynamic design going on and the downward, on the downward slope, that's also our rock guard. Obviously we're using aluminum diamond plate across it, but it helps to deflect rock. So that way as you're kicking up stuff, you're not causing damage to the rest of your unit, you're actually deflecting the rocks away, which is a really nice feature that all of our units have. So, and also what we're also looking at with the same um, with our front compartments, we have our two, uh, our two stage area for propane tanks. And then same thing over here, we have our, um, our bracket over here so that way we can fit two five gallon jerry cans. So again, it's the same feature that we have on all the front of our HQ model series, kind of like the HQ19, the 17, the 15 and so on. So we have all our same features. We have our nice heavy duty jockey wheel. Uh, that's able to raise it up and down and roll around a little bit. Um, we have our mechanical handbrake. We ha also have our articulating hitch right here. So a lot of the same features that we've already seen on all of our other units, again, here with the HQ21. So as we continue around, we come around and again in the front, um, we have our exterior speaker. It's a marine grade exterior speaker so that we can have music for the outside. And you may notice a little bit of a change from some of the other HQ models. Instead of our, our, our signature red stripe and red uh, rock guard bars, we're going with a yellow on the HQ21 models. So also here up in the front, we have our storage cabinet. So this one is going to be our pass-through storage. So it's gonna go from this side all the way to the other side, there's another door. And we also have a uh, scale in here so that way we can measure it when we're trying to level out our vehicle. We already have a level that is mounted inside one of the cabinets. Um, now, as we go along, as we move along, we get into the next cabinet and the next cabinet holds the big surprise that everyone is, loves about it. And that is our outdoor kitchen. So we again still have our outdoor kitchen in this unit. We're gonna pull it out here. This has the nice big prep table on it. So we'll get it pulled out, get it in place, open it up. And again, we have our prep table with our three burner stove, with our sink, um, along with our gravity drain and all that stuff. I don't wanna to get too much in the details on it. We can get into that on, on another video or another part of our series, but we do have the outdoor kitchen, one of the really popular features on all of our units. Now, one of the other really nice features about our units is nice big windows. We have really nice uh, use of Eurovision windows. It's a double pane window, um, but they're nice and big. So it gives you a nice large area for viewing the outdoors. Because um, again, what are we doing? We're getting outdoors, we're finding our adventures, we're reimagining re where we can go, but we're getting out to the nature and being able to see the nature is nice when we have nice big windows. Uh, if you also look up, we also have our, our floodlights. We have one over here, we also have one over here, as well as another dual pane window. Um, so as we come along, as we're looking, we have a uh, black water tank fill. So when we are dumping our sewer tank, our black water tank, this is the valve we're gonna pull off this cap. We're gonna fill, use this area to flush our black tank when we're dumping our sewer tank. Um, so as we go along, we're looking, we have our heavy duty, we have our uh, uh, Cooper tires, our 265, 75, 16 tires. Um, and again, our diamond plate, along with our aluminum composite for our construction. Now, as part of our construction, we do have welded aluminum walls. The walls are welded all the way around, um, from the sides to the top to the other sides, all the way around. All of the framing is welded together as aluminum. We also have our insulating factors, our insulation factor of R16 within all of the walls and the roof and the sides. We have insulation along the floors. We got insulation all the way around this unit, from the floors to the walls, to the ceiling, to the roof, it's all the way around. R16 factor for our insulation. 
as we're coming along, we also have another, this is an exterior, uh, they call it a prep table, but it can be a really good table for anything. You can set things on it, uh, maybe a crock pot. If you have a crock pot, you want to let it set and simmer and cook while you're off doing your adventures for the day. You either have a 12 volt DC plug here, or we also have a GFCI plug here that would operate under, uh, whether if you're plugged into a shoreline or a generator or something like that. But you have your exterior GFCI plug to go along with it. And then right next to this, we have our uh, exterior solar light. So the nice part is it is, let me see if I can get it to come on here. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Ah, oh, there we go, there we go. So when it's first, when it's first on, it's, oh, it must be low battery. So it hasn't been out long enough to charge. So when it first comes on, it's very light, it's very dim. And then as you get close, this little white dot right here is actually a motion sensor. So as you get closer, it picks up the motion, bam, it gets a nice bright light. So it helps to light up your walkway, your path as you're walking up. And again, we have another exterior speaker here. Again, a marine grade speaker. So another feature that we find on all of our HQ models is our security screen. And so you very simply, I'm just gonna show you really quickly how to release this. So you see this little lever right here, that's the release lever for our screen. Now usually what I will do to get it open is I'll put my thumb on the lock, this is the lock, and I'll use that as a leverage to help lift up. Just make it a little bit easier. But as it comes out, it comes around, we open it up, obviously. That's gonna be our screen, this is gonna be our lock. So again, as you notice, there is no lock on our door. The lock is actually on the screen. So if you wish, you can, and I'm gonna open this back up one more time. Now if you notice up here at the top, up here, there's nothing sticking out, but if I move the lever, we get a secondary bar that comes out, and there's also one down here. So we actually are locking in three different positions. So as I close the screen, and it's just latched here in the middle, so if I pull on the top, we get a lot of movement and play out of it because, and the same thing with the bottom because it's not latched there. But when I lock the screen, now we've limited how much movement there is. And it also helps with having this aluminum security screen all the way down, it helps to create more of a rigid screen instead of having that nice soft like screen material come all the way down. So if you have dogs that like to dig on the screen or you have young children, at least this way, they might be able to tear through the screen, but they're not gonna get through the security screen portion of it. So that's one of the nice things. So again, if you want to, you can lock this screen open and leave the door open if you wish. It's up to you what you'd like to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this back up right now. So as we're looking at some stuff, we also have, if we look up, we also have our awning. We have an awning that runs just about the length of the trailer of the camper, I should say. And so this camper is actually 28 feet long. It runs from the tip of the poly block all the way to the two rear spare tires on the back. Actually, let's come on back here and I'll show you the spares back here. And again, we have two spare tires on the back. And one of the really cool features that they've done with this unit is they've actually put gas shocks on it. So you would pull the pin, release the pin, and this whole unit would lower down with the assistance of the gas shocks, as opposed to say like the HQ-19, where it's on a solid mount and you'd have to pull the tires off. This way, a little bit easier to maneuver or you can lower it down if you need to for whatever reason. But again, one of the nice things, if you look, a nice big window, if we're looking at the backside of this, I love the size of the windows on this unit. And again, this comes back down around to our dining area. That's what I pointed out in one of the earlier videos, one of my teaser ones. And so I'm gonna come this way with me. And so one of the things, again, this huge, nice, big Eurovision windows. And so again, the dual pane. Now, if you can kind of look right here, one, we also have a ratcheting system, so that way we can open the windows at different widths. But if you can come in here and if you kind of look, again, that nice, thick, dual pane window. So we have some, some distance in between it. And that really helps and contributes with our R factor when it comes to insulation. So when it comes down to having cold temperatures outside and we have our heater on inside, we're not gonna get that difference in the temperatures where our windows get condensation and fog up because we have the dual pane windows, which is one of the really nice features. And let's say, and these are really tough windows, but let's just say there's something happens, you hit a tree trunk, you break one of the windows, you still have the inner window that's still holding in place. So uh, again, back here, continuing on the back side, uh, we have a outside shower. So I'm gonna go ahead and open it up real quick here and show you. It's just very simple. It's just a very simple, hot and cold, uh, nice, easy shower head. Pulls out. See, we got a little valve on here, a little clip. 
So you can actually hang it on here if you wish to. So if, if you're out here rinsing off or whatever, you can actually, let me flip this around here, you can actually hang that on there. Um, so if you have, maybe you have you got some kids over here, the kids would be short enough that they could have a little shower here they could use. Um, or, you know, if you're, again, if you're washing yourself off, that way you don't have to let it dangle, you can let it hang off of that. So as we continue around, we have another 12 volt plug here on the outside. And then we also have our water tank fills right here. So we have our drinking water tank and our general water tank. And so again, the HQ models have two water tanks. They have a 50 gallon, this model especially, has a 50 gallon general water tank. And that's gonna run your showers, it's gonna run your sinks, uh, your outside kitchen, stuff like that. And then you have your 16 gallon drinking water tank because that's going to be run off of a secondary pump from a secondary tank, and that's gonna go through a triple filtration system, so that way you're drinking filtered water because you don't need to filter the water that you're showering in necessarily. So just use the filters for the water you're gonna be drinking. So again, two separate tanks, two separate water pumps. So as we move along up front up here, um, we have our vent. This is our vent for our hot water heater. Our hot, or excuse me, this is our vent for our indoor heater, my mistake. Um, so a propane tank um, heater up inside. So on the very cold days, the very cold areas you're gonna be in, you're gonna be utilizing your propane heater the most. Um, that's gonna be powered off your propane. It's kind of a low powered uh, fan that's gonna be running off the 12 volt system. So you don't need to be plugged in. Um, you don't have to have a generator running. Um, it runs off of your 12 volts and that's gonna be heating up your unit very well. Again, that has a 16,000 BTU heater. Now, 16,000 BTUs, that's designed to heat about a 900 square foot area or about the size of a master bedroom. And you're heating this unit right here. Um, so you're gonna be more than warm enough. Um, then we come up here and this is our hot water heater. Um, it is a six gallon hot water heater system, run off your propane as well. Um, and then as we do need to plug in for our power, we have our power plug here. Um, it's a 30 amp power plug. If you need to plug into a shoreline or plug into a generator to operate um, any of the thing, uh, things that you need to, or if, let's say you're in too much of a shaded area and you have to charge your batteries, plug in a generator, plug in a shoreline, and that's what you're gonna be plugging into. And then we have the other side of our pass-through storage, um, the other side of our cabinetry right here, as well as our breaker box. So our breaker box is here for like for our air conditioner and some of our other appliances, a little bit heavier, uh, bigger stuff, our GFCI plugs and whatnot. So we do have a breaker box out here for those things um, that are running off of the 110 power, but all the other stuff um, is gonna be controlled inside um, with the switches inside, okay? So now we're back out to the front um, and we're back out to all the stuff we started with. So we're gonna go back around and we're gonna go back inside. So there's a couple little features right here in the doorway before we step in I wanted to show you. Now right here on the right, there is a small little white switch. So if you look at the stairway, there's nothing lit up. But when I flip the switch, we actually have an underneath light. So it's actually lighting up the stairwell. Now one of the really nice things about it is you're gonna leave, it's daytime, there's still light out, but you know when you come back, it's gonna be dark. You do have your security light, Cool, but you don't want to be running your lights all day long. So here's one of the really cool features. Now, just imagine the door, but I want you to be able to see this if we close the door. So we'll do it with the screen. So as the screen closes, watch the light. So if you come around, if you watch the light, when the screen closes, the light shuts off. So that way, when you get back after being out on your adventures, out on your hike, biking, whatever it is you're doing while you're out on your adventure, when you get back, you open up the door, and the light kicks right on for you. So that way you have a nice lit up walkway area to step into. Now, another little switch that we have over here on this side over here is for our steps. They are battery powered. This one is electric, it's a battery powered step. They also come in manual power steps, okay? So just a couple of cool little features that are right here, right in the entryway of the HQ21. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna step inside and we're gonna take a look and see what we got. So now that we're in the unit, now you've already seen, again, part of the previous video where I was jumping around and I was showing you guys the tables and my excitement and stuff. And so now what we've done is right now, we already have the table set up in its bed configuration. So it's already been lowered down. We placed the pad across the table. So now you can see how the bed configuration would look. So you could either have a couple people, large, taller adults sleep this way, 
Um, as the trailer is actually seven and a half foot wide, so you can actually get some. Now you do lose a few inches with the thickness of the pad, but you should be able to get, you know, maybe about a six foot tall um, adult sleeping across this way, or maybe a couple kids, um, or you can have them sleep this way as well, especially like the smaller kids, stuff like that. So here you can see the bed configuration or the table in its bed configuration. Now, why we're in this area too, um, while the table's down, because it makes it a little bit easier, I'm gonna show you the underneath compartments. So the underneath compartments is where you're gonna find your battery and your your switch, your battery switches for your cutoff, um, your inverter, and as well as a whole lot of storage underneath the bench. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take a look at that real quick. Okay, so in the first compartment, so the one closest to the door, as we lift up this pad, and it's a short little pad, and the, the best part is we even got a shorter little pad in here, a cute little pad right there. And so we have our first compartment. And so within our first compartment, if you look, we have one, two, three, four big AGM batteries, 100 amp hours a piece, as well as our battery cutoff switch. So that way you can turn off all of your batteries completely. That's completely disconnect. Um, as well as our fuses. We have an inverter fuse, control panel, the towing vehicle, as well as a fuse for these solar controllers. So we have our solar controller, our batteries, and they're all bracketed down and they're all put in there very securely. So again, nice, big four batteries give you lots of power to make sure you're powering all your lights and whatnot throughout the day. So here, continuing on with the bench, with the dinette area, now we're in the middle pad. Now in the middle pad, as we lift up the door, as you can see, we have our standard 2000 watt inverter that we like to use. So we have our batteries, we have our inverter, and then again, we have our battery charger or the, the battery charging controller in the other compartment as well. So all of our electrical system stuff is located right here in the first two compartments, easily and, uh, easily and readily available to get to. Now, this third bench, this third side, is really one of the most exciting sides because if you open it up, there's actually two doors to it. And if you look under there, there's a lot of storage underneath this bench. So whether you're using like sleeping bags or food or whatever it is you're gonna put in there, there's a lot of room underneath the benches for storage. So like I said before in, in my previous video, there is a lot of storage in this unit. I mean, you look around, you got one, two, three, four, five, six cabinets just in this area alone. Um, so I, again, a lot of room for storage, a lot of room for space, a lot of room. Well, I can't open this one at the same time, but a lot of room for stuff everywhere within this unit. So this, the HQ21 really has a lot of nice amenities when it comes to storage. Okay, so now that we are done kind of going through the different compartments in the dinette area, I've gone ahead and I've removed the two pads. I just picked them up, I just moved them here for now. Later on, probably what I'll do is I'll probably actually put them back up in the front bedroom area. But what I wanted to show you again was how the table works. So one of the nice things, like I said, it's a singular telescoping table and there's a trigger just underneath here. And so when you squeeze the trigger, it comes up, it elevates very easily. So then you have your dinette table. And so just in case you haven't seen it here, I'm gonna sit down here. You know, I can squeeze through here. So there's a lot of room, even in this area. But this table, you know, like if I sit to the side, even as a big guy, I can sit here. I can still have somebody sitting here. Someone can still sit here, sit here. So potentially you can sit about five to six people at this table and be able to move comfortably. You might be playing a little bit of, of, of knee knockers where you're knocking each other's knees, but if you need the table space, this is a great place because you're sitting, you're eating, you're gathering with your family. Maybe you're playing a card game, playing a board game, having fun. You have this beautiful view with all of these big windows. What a great, great area. One of my favorite areas and one of my favorite campers. So as long as I'm here in the dinette area, I use this opportunity to talk about the screens. Now, again, we've seen these screens before. It's the ones we're always using in our units, but we like to incorporate a nice open window because if you have open windows, open windows have a better tendency for airflow through unit. Well, the bugs don't always cooperate. So you can't always have wide open windows with better airflow. So we do still have our screens. So we have our bug screen and we have our privacy screen. So the two will actually latch together. 
latched together, and then they can slide up so you have your full view bug screen. Or, hey, it's nighttime, and I need to block out the, the, the possible morning sunlight. We have this, but you know, let's say it's still hot. We don't want to run the air conditioner because we're not plugged in uh, to a shoreline, and the inverter and the battery power is not going to run the air conditioner unless you do a lot of upgrades to it. Personal upgrades, not from us. So you want the screen open. So I have my screen open, but you still got to block the morning sun. That's why we have the blinds. So I'm going to reach over my shoulder here. I'm going to close down the blinds so that way we can still get that nighttime or that dark covering when the sun comes up in the morning. Now, let's say you're down the, for, the, for the count, it's bedtime, but you still wanna do some reading. So I'm gonna scoot over here. And so the nice thing is I love how we have these touch, I love the touch lights. Now the first touch is gonna give you like a little ambient blue light, kind of like a night light. You give it a second touch, now you have your reading light. And to turn it back off, you just touch it again. So again, right as we come in the door to our right, we have our, our entertainment area at our center. And so we actually start off with actually all of our lighting switches. And so these switches right here control the lights between the puck lights, the LED lights, and all the lights within the cabin and the compartment. This is the main battery cutoff. So the large square one, you turn that, you turn everything off. And then you have these rocker switches here. So the rocker switches are actually for the floodlights outside from the sides to the front and to the back. And then we also have another GFCI, or ground fault current interrupter plug right here. Now, as again, we get into our, our kind of entertainment storage area. We have our DVD TV player. So as I pull it out here, if you look over here on the side, you can see there is a DVD player there. Okay, but there's also a high definition antenna that's hooked into this TV. And so that's what this controller here is. This is so uh, just like the, the uh, TV antenna you have at your home, possibly if you have one, if you don't you know, have satellite or something. And so there's actually a little lever here. Let's see if I can show you here. You actually squeeze this lever, which frees it up and allows you to turn the antenna so that way you get the clearest signal for the high definition TV antenna. So it's just like the old school rabbit ears if you are familiar with that. Now another feature you may not be able to see unless you kind of come up around over here is, and there, this is what we're including on all of our newer units, and it's back in here, and it's this little white switch. So this little, little light switch is the thermostat, if you can kind of see that, it's the thermostat for if you opt to buy the or order the winter package. Now the winter package includes a heated pad that goes up against your water tanks to keep your water tanks from freezing. And so this is the thermostat control for it. So you hit the switch, you turn it on, and then you have all of your different settings to increase your heat, lower your heat, or whatever you're gonna do with it, okay? And then when you come down here, you have another little open cabinet door, so that way there's some storage you can put in here, maybe a DVD or whatever you wanna put down in here. And as you come down, you have more storage, more cabinetry. Some really actually the bottom ones are actually a fairly deep cabinet. Um, but the nice part is we have some nice cabinetry, some nice stuff that you can put um, things in here, belongings, DVDs, whatever it is you're going to bring with you, you can put it down in here. So now as we get into the kitchen area, we have our nice little kitchen. We have our cabinets. We'll start up here in the cabinets. We have some nice cabinet space. And actually in this one, this is going to be our control panel where we have all of our breaker switches, as well as our water gauges for our gray tanks, our black tanks, our general, our drinking. Um, we have a, a, an LED readout for our voltage, how much is being used. We also have our switches for our water heater. It's a double switch. The one with the, uh, the indicator of the flame is so that way the hot water will work off of propane. And the one with the little lightning bolt, that's for if you're plugged into a shoreline so you can heat your water with electrical power. Um, so, and then you have your pump switches. One is for drinking water, one is for general water to turn on your pumps. Like I said earlier, there are two water pumps, one for general and one for drinking, okay? And then here in this one, this is gonna be a cabinet for putting, you know, dishes or plates or cups or whatever you're gonna do. And right now we have, you know, some paperwork and stuff like that up in here. And then we have our microwave. Now again, to use your microwave, you need to turn on your inverter. Now we utilize a satellite switch for our inverter. So your inverter, the main unit will be turned into the off position and you'll use the satellite switch that's on the wall back there to turn on your microwave or to turn on your TV. 
Okay, so again, here in the kitchen, we have some other cool little things. So we have our vent and our lights that go up in here. I'm gonna turn the fan back off because we have our stove right here. So we have a nice cover. So this way you can use this stove area as a prep area, as a serving area, whatever you need it to be when you're not using it as your stove. So this just lifts up very gently. And the nice part is we actually have now a clip here. So when you come back, it hits up against that rather than hitting up against your, uh, your screen here. This is the top of the stove, or this is a cover for the stove. You lift this up. And so now we have our three burner stove. So whenever you're using or whenever you're cooking within the, the camper, you wanna make sure you turn on your vent so that way you have that heat being vented out of the area. Now, as we come down, we also have an oven. Now, only two of our units now have ovens, our HQ19 and now our HQ21. So it's kind of a nice feature if you are prepared to use it. Not everybody uses it. I personally don't typically use my oven, but I do have it there if I want it. Um, you know, you have like some little you know, lights and you know some other little cool things with it, but at least we do still have an oven within this unit. Now, below this, we also have some cabinetry as well as a gas line shut off. So we've added a lot of safety features when it comes to like gas lines and stuff like that. And so we have a shut off. Now, what good would cooking be if you didn't have spices, right? So if we come over to this cabinet over here and we open this up, we have our spice rack. And so it's a nice slimline spice rack. You lift up the valve right here and this slides right out. And so you can put uh, either spices in there or even store cans of food or whatever you wanna be. But again, you have some nice features when it comes to using your kitchen area. So now that we're in the sink area, I'd like to point out there is a light up here. Now it's not connected to any switches because it's actually a touch light. So if you touch it in the middle, it turns on and it turns off. So that way you don't have to worry about any electrical because you also get the microwave just above it. So you couldn't really run the light. But this way you have an over the sink light. So our sink, we have a nice deep metal sink. Okay, we have a little cleaning area here so you can set dishes and whatnot while you're cleaning and washing, whatever. But again, we also have two little openings, two valves here for our sink. One is gonna be when you flip it on, that's gonna be coming from your general water tank. Now, if you come over here and you look over here on the side, there's a valve right here on the side. That's your drinking water valve. So you flip that down and you get your drinking water. Again, two water pumps. Second one has a triple filter. So if you look under the sink, we keep talking about this triple filter. So I'm gonna get under the sink here. We're gonna open this up. And as this opens up and we look, here's our triple filter system. Now we've made some other improvements to how things are done. So now, uh, if you look, we have valves so we can shut off the area or the water coming into our triple filters. Whereas before, we didn't have those valves. So again, some improvements that we're making. And then another thing that we do have under this cabinet is our hot water temperature reader. So now these have a gauge on it so that we can adjust how much hot water is coming from the hot water tank into our system. So that way, we're not setting it too high and scolding ourselves. All right, so again, continuing with the kitchen, as we come in, we have our drawers with our utensil holders. And our drawers are, let me close a little bit harder, are the soft closed drawers. So it catches and will close softly and it won't allow you to slam it shut. Oops. This has some nice, a nice deep drawer. So we have some, some bowls and some cups stored in here. But again, you can store whatever food is gonna be putting into places, however you would like. And then down here, we also have some nice storage. So if you wanted to put, you know, your garbage bags or, or whatever, you know, maybe rolls of paper towels or whatever things you may have, you can store that in that lower area. Okay. So again, to conclude our kitchen area is our refrigerator. So we have our freezer and our refrigerator. So it's a dual zone fridge or freezer and refrigerator. So, but full size. Um, and then as you come down here to the bottom, we have one more cabinet. And again, in the cabinet, you can actually see the clear hoses for our filler tubes, for our drinking water and our general water, and then the two pumps. And again, the two pumps, one is for your sink and your shower and the toilet, and the secondary pump is gonna be for your drinking water. 
So in our units, if you look up at our ceilings, we used to have that high gloss look to it. Well, we've changed part of uh, what we're using now. So now we're using more of like an acrylic piece with a matte finish. So it's not that shiny finish that we have. Um, and again, we still have our speakers mounted on the ceiling and as well as our LED strip lighting and as well as our puck lighting to help light things up. We're still using the Malaysian cabinetry, the Malaysian wood with the wood veneer cabinetry and our locking cabinets as well. And so as we come around and we look around at all these different things, a couple of changes. We also have, uh, you know, we're using thin sheets of aluminum within our construction as well. So we're making a lot of improvements. Um, our roof, um, we're using a single sheet of aluminum for our roof. Um, our height, we're still looking in this unit, if I get past the air conditioner, we have a head clearance of six foot three inches within this unit. Now, when you get to the air conditioner, eh, it's a little bit closer, like six foot-ish or so, um, you run into it, but that's unfortunately, that's just one of the things that that's what this unit is and for its heights. Now, as we come around the corner over here, one of the nice improvements that we've done, and I'm gonna show you the door really quick, and then we can show you the rest of the shower, is the changing of our door. I love this door, this articulating door, this uh, uh, accordion door. And so as the water hits, it's not folding out into the living space. The, the whole door will roll back onto itself. So that way all the water stays within the shower space. So you can see as it hits the track, that track is gonna leave the water in the shower. So we have a nice large shower space. Um, it's about oh, maybe what, a two and a half by three foot to maybe even four foot wide or so. Um, we have a nice shower head with, which also is able to slide up and down. We have a rack in here so we can hang some stuff. If we wanna maybe hang a towel for later on when we're letting it dry, um, you know, or put our soap or whatever we would like to do. We can have a little dish rack, a little soap rack there. Um, and a really nice shower head on there um, with several different settings. So that way you can get a nice good wash. But again, that's if you are hooked up to a water area, um, otherwise you'll go through that 50 gallons of water pretty darn quickly. Um, and then there's also a vent. I'm gonna turn this, uh, that one on. We have a vent with lights on it too. So that way you kind of add to your lighting feature as you are in the shower. So it's a really nice large shower area. So as we continue into the trailer from the shower, now we come into the bathroom area. And so we have a nice porcelain sink. The toilet is actually porcelain. It's not a plastic camping trailer toilet. Um, there is a vanity drawer uh, that's in there as well as a nice little shelf. Uh, so maybe it's for storing your hand towels or whatever you're gonna be using. I'm gonna actually come in here real quick. I'm gonna open up the little drawer. So you do have the piping in the way, but you know, you can still store things in there. Uh, you know, maybe toothpaste or mouthwash or extra rolls of toilet paper, whatever you wanna do. But we have a nice, cute, like I said, little vanity, little shelving area. Um, this again is your restroom. And we are also utilizing that same accordion door technology on the door. Uh, it's not pulling out into um, the area. Um, as well as there's a nice little window on there so you can open up your window to vent things out as need be. So speaking of the air conditioner, obviously our unit has an air conditioner. And the thing with our units is it's a Dometic air conditioner, but it's a dual zone. You have air, cooling air, and it's also got like a heat pump so you can use it as an air conditioner and as a heater. So if you look up here on the gauges, you can see you have the different gauges for blue for cold, red for hot. So that would be able to be in like cool temperatures, not extreme cold temperatures for keeping you warm. For keeping you warm in the extreme cold temperatures, you'd want to refer to the propane powered vent, which is down here by the bed, down by the floor down there. And I'll talk a little bit about it a little bit later and I'll show you the thermostat for it a little bit later and the switch for it. But that's gonna be the main heater unit when you're in your extreme cold temperatures. When you're getting down into the low fives, the zeros, the negatives, stuff like that. This will work good for cold temperatures, but not for your extreme colds. Your extreme colds, you should be referring down to your floor propane heater unit. So here in the front bedroom area, essentially, so we're at the front of the trailer, we have a really nice features in here. And so one of the nice features we have is this overhead right here. Now, one of the cool parts about it is there's actually a light on. I'm gonna go ahead and turn it on and kind of light things up a little bit. But you also, you can open things up. So you kind of push this bar that raises it up. That really helps cool off 
this entire unit, this entire area as it is. Um, and this also has your privacy screen or your bug screen, um, as it were, so you can have those open as well. But again, some really nice features to it. Nice large windows, nice large window here, nice large window on the other side as well. And then one of the other features that's here, um, we have a drawer. So we got a drawer on each side of the bed that pulls open. And one of the things we have is also our thermostat. So this is the thermostat for the propane heater I was talking about earlier. And the propane heater is actually mounted just beneath my feet right here um, in this bedroom area. Um, there's also a small cabinet on the floor over here as well, underneath the bed. There's not a lot of storage or there's not a ton of storage underneath our beds like you find in most trailers because what's actually stored under our beds is that slided across outdoor kitchen and then other front compartments. So there's not a ton of under bed storage here in this area. So also another feature here in our bedroom is another DVD TV player. Uh, so you can sit in bed, relax, watch some TV, maybe watch a movie. Um, we also have another speaker mounted up here, um, as well as more cabinets. We have more cabinets that also line the area. We have two cabinets uh, where you can hang clothing as well. Uh, so really the front bedroom area is similar to most all of the other units, the HQ-19, the HQ-17, the HQ-15, stuff like that, that we have on our units. It's just now one of the other nice features is if you're having kids, you got the kids up front, you have your pocket door. So the pocket door right now is locked in place. So you can release it, slides across. And so we have our pocket door locked in place. So that way now, you have some privacy if you wish to change or just have some private time, whatever you need. Um, but that's one of the nice things is we have our pocket door here. So here in the front area, as we have, you know, our entertainment area and we have all the different things we have. One of the other things we also have is our radio. So we have our radio that's going to work on our speakers. The speakers we saw outside and the speakers we saw in the unit when I show you in a little bit here. Um, but we also have our satellite switch. This is the satellite inverter switch. So the main unit is under the bench there, but you want to leave that in the off position and only utilize this one. So there's inverter on, there's inverter off, and then there's this third switch that says power saver. Don't ever use that. That is for technician's use only. You only want to use on and off. Now, the only time you turn the inverter on is when you need to use the microwave or your TV. You come over, you flip it to the on position, it'll turn on, it'll go through the little cycle here. Now our microwave just turned on, that was that beep. Okay, now if you are going to plug in to a 30 amp shoreline, you use your outside plug, you want to charge your batteries. When you plug in, you need to turn your inverter switch to the on position because then your inverter becomes a converter. So usually if you're going to go from 12 volt power, it's going to be DC, it's going to, the inverter is going to invert it to AC power to use the microwave or the TV. But when you plug into the wall, it's going to take AC power, convert it into DC power to charge your battery. Once your battery is charged, you turn off your inverter switch. So now that we're here underneath the HQ21, one of the first features I really want to point out is our floor insulation. So we have insulation that goes from the top to the bottom and through all the walls that helps to contribute to that R16 factor of insulation, which is gonna help keep you warm in those cold winter outings while you're out camping. So underneath, we also have our 26 gallon tanks, our 26 gallon black tank and our 26 gallon gray tank. And as you can see here, they're protected by that bash guard. So that way they are protected when you're off-roading, going through the deeper uh, ravines and stuff, this way, that's gonna protect your tanks. Now, we've wrapped our tanks to help with the insulation of the tanks to help it keep from freezing. And so now one of the features that we've gone to doing as we come down this way, we used to have two separate discharges. Now, Black Series has gone to a single discharge with our HQ21 and future models. So again, continuing on underneath the HQ21, as I have above me here, underneath another bash guard, this is our 16 gallon drinking water tank. 
And if you can look just over here, you can see all of the insulation. So we put insulation on the pipes so that way we can keep from our pipes freezing and the cold temperatures our water. But you still need to order the winter package to get the heating pad to keep the tanks from freezing as well. So again, one of the biggest features and most prominent features that makes up the Black Series Camper is of course our heavy duty independent suspension, our independent swing arms. So you can see here on the one side where I am, there's two swing arms and each swing arm has two shocks to it. So we got the two heavy duty shocks. And then if you look up in here, obviously we have the heavy duty spring to help adjust and help to hold everything in place. And then we also have the limiting chain. Now the limiting chain, that's gonna keep it from dropping out this whole unit and having everything pop apart, having the spring pop out, overextending the shocks and causing damage. And so that's how everything looks when it's all put together. And again, why the dual shocks? Because two shocks is better than one, because now we have two shocks sharing the load, keeping the tire on the ground Whereas if we had one shock, it would wear out very quickly and it would die out and then you'd have to re replace it way sooner than if you have two. So again, here at the back of the unit, one of the biggest features we have underneath here is our tank, our 50 gallon general water tank. And so again, you see it's got a bash guard held up in there in place. And so everything is just put in very nicely. And so you can see insulation on the pipes right here. And another feature we have here, this is our drain valve right here. So if you need to drain your tank, especially during those winter months, here's your drain valve. It's a little ball cock valve. If you open it up, you're gonna drain your water out from this low point right here. Now, again, as you get up underneath here, you have these heat pads. So you have the tube that comes down and you're gonna have heat pads that you can add on as part of your winter package. Now, again, just as a reminder for this winter package, you'll need to order that from your dealership. Um, they're not gonna come from the manufacturer, at least not at this point, um, with that in place. You're gonna have to order these heat pads from your dealership so that way you have it in place. So again, here underneath, here you can see I'm at the very back of the unit. Here's the bracket for our spare tires and everything. So this is the entry end over here. But what I wanted to point out is, one, our frame. We have this thick tubular frame that runs the entire length of the unit. And we have our skid guard here on the back end of it as well. So if you hit something like maybe going out of a low driveway or a steep drive or something like that, you have this skid guard to help protect part of the frame or whatever you're going against, or even the uh, bracket that holds on for your spare tires. But again, here's that thick tubular frame that runs from the very front of the drawbar all the way to the back of our unit. So there you have it, everybody, the HQ21 walkthrough. I may have missed a couple things. I think I got everything covered. I didn't talk about piano hinges and little, little detail stuff, but I got everything covered as best as I could. If you got any questions, please feel free. Send us an email, ask us, jbuck at blackseriescamper.com. I'll see if I can maybe get some more pictures for you or whatever we need to do, or just at least answer your questions. So I hope you enjoyed what I was able to go through and all what I was able to show you. I hope you're as excited as I am about this unit, and we're excited to hear from you guys and wait to see how many people would love to have one of these. Again, this is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers in Southern California in the city of industry, saying get out there, find your adventure, reimagine where you can go. Have a great day, everybody. Take care. How you doing everybody? This is Jim Buck with Black Series Campers of Southern California out of the city of industry. And we hope that you enjoyed the last video of a series that we just got finished watching. And what we'd like to do is we'd like to ask to make sure that you please like and subscribe to our channel so that way you can see all of the videos that are coming up in our series. So make sure that you get out there, you smash that bell up in that corner up there. And again, this is Jim Buck with Black Series Camper. So we hope you enjoyed that video. Take care, everybody. Have a great day.